what's up guys welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to be talking about some of my top three tips that you can use to get in grade nine or to achieve well in any subject not just computer science so tip number one is going to be learn by explaining what i mean is everyone knows that in order to do well you need to do the past paper questions which is going to make you more confident in answering those exam style questions when it comes to the real exam however what i would encourage you to do get a friend or a family friend and explain them how you got the answer i feel like when you explain something to someone that's what really tests your knowledge whether you know a subject or not and i think it's far more valuable that you spend more time explaining how things work to someone else than it is basically just attempting it by yourself so all you have to do do a question get a friend or family member and say i'm going to tell you why this answer is the correct answer to this question in fact there was a very famous mathematician that you may know albert einstein who said a famous quote if you can't explain it to a six-year-old then you don't understand it or put in other words you don't understand something truly until you you can explain it simply. I reckon the reason why I'm good at computer science is because I've been spending the past few years teaching it. And often I would think that I know something, but when it comes to making a 30 second video on TikTok, I realize that I don't really know the topic fully. So the bottom line is whenever you're revising, please do explain the things that you're doing. Justify why that answer is the correct answer to that question. So tip number two is work on reducing the silly mistakes how are you going to do this well you're going to build your conceptual memory recall a time that you made a silly mistake in the exam it might be this mocks or a previous mock everyone's done it of course i've done it as well everyone makes a silly mistake in hindsight we go back we look at it and we're like oh i probably wasn't paying attention which led to this mistake but after doing some more research and thinking about it deeply i realized that oftentimes we don't have the conceptual knowledge on that particular topic so when it comes to the exam we're focusing our energy behind those key parts now let me show you with an example it's a program where you output fizz if it's a divisible by three and buzz if it's divisible by five and fizz buzz if it's divisible by both so if you look at this question if you don't have the fundamental knowledge of what you need to do, for example, a for loop, then all your memory power is going to go into going into your memory and finding how to do a for loop with the syntax and stuff. So a for i in range, so on. Instead of tackling the main problem, which is to actually find if a number is divisible by three or not, or five. So this is what I mean. Build your memory around conceptual ideas. So if you have the idea of a for loop in your brain, you're straight away going to be able to apply that knowledge into the exam. Instead of wasting time first finding out what a for loop, what the syntax for a for loop is, and then answering the question. So oftentimes we don't know the concept. That's why we kind of make some mistakes. And how you build on this conceptual memory is basically by doing practice. You have to get so good that you basically can do it in your sleep. The second type of mistakes are inevitable. At the end of the paper, you just have to go through the paper again. And the third thing is review the mistakes. From past papers that you've done at home, in time conditions or at school, review those mistakes to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes again and work on that memory, work on that muscle, just like how you would in a gym. Tip number three is, this might seem obvious, but space out your revision spacing out your revision can make a huge difference in how well you remember things this is because once you when you learn everything at once cram everything in 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 one session that signals to your brain that once it's over you need to forget about it but that's not the real case because in your mocks you still have to remember it after your mocks you gotta remember it as well so you need to basically space out those revision sessions so that you remember more information and it signals to your brain i need to remember this topic for a longer time and the way that you're going to do this is by creating a revision timetable i know that you guys have probably 10 or 11 subjects that you need to space out revision for so that's why you need a timetable just like your school things what i used to do is i just used to have the subjects i had on that day i just do the same like th a two hour revision session after school i know what you're thinking you're going to be like who can actually be asked to do a timetable, plan out the re revision sessions and all of that? 
I mean, I'm working on creating a timetable, so drop a like, drop a comment if you want to see like a computer science um, revision schedule for GCSE or A level. So to summarize the three points that I gave you, the first one is learn by explaining. So whether that's a family friend or a family member. Second tip was build your conceptual memory, basically by, by practicing on those key concepts such as like a for loop or while loop until they become natural and then apply it to the exam questions. The third tip is to space out the revision. So again, start now. It's currently what, December? You've got what, five months until your GCSEs? Start now. Trust me, you won't regret starting early. You're gonna regret after your February mocks. You're gonna be like, oh, GCSE computer science tutor told me to start ages ago, but I haven't started. So make sure you start revising. If you're stuck, go on my website start revising computer science now.